Hey guys, it's your baby cakes, and yes, it's been a while since my last video. So I decided to continue with my next video. The top 10 things to do in a long distance relationship. Long distance relationships aren't easy. It takes a lot of effort and dedication from both sides in order to keep it alive. So what can you do? Let's check out my list starting with number 10. Number 10. Talking on the phone and texting. I recommend doing this with your partner in order to get an update. Um, you can ask them how their day was or how they're doing. You can text them cute little messages to make them smile. Or you can leave a pleasant voice message in case they don't answer right away. Keep it short, simple, and sweet. This lets your partner know that you're thinking about them and that you're still there. Number nine. A couple apps. This app is perfect for long distance relationships. It's a private messaging app for just you and your partner. It enables you to message each other, send photos, videos, express yourself with cute stickers. Okay, sounds just like any other messaging app. But wait, there's more. You can draw together at the same time, share to-do lists, make calendar reminders, pinpoint your actual location to show where you are to your partner, and thumb kiss where you can touch the same spot on your phones and it makes your phones vibrate at the same time oh my god it's so cute there's so much to do on this app it saves everything so it's like building a shared history between you two so you can always look back at it and say yeah we're cute number eight I think I stopped doing that. Ad libs, one word game, and 20 questions. I recommend playing these games with your partner over the phone. And this is kind of like an icebreaker, especially for those new couples who are still shy. I know when my boyfriend and I um, first started talking, we only talked through Facebook messaging and PlayStation messaging. We were so shy. Talking on the phone wasn't even an option. We were so shy. At one point, my boyfriend's friend had to connect a call between me and him and ask us questions like what's our favorite color or what's our favorite book and we would just both answer the question eventually it was just a conversation between my boyfriend and his friend and i would just remain silent but then one day i messaged him hey let's talk on the phone but just me and you and you know what let's play a game first we played adlibs which is a game where you ask your friend to give you a whole bunch of nouns, verbs, adjectives, whatever. And then at the end of it, um, you make a funny story. And it was very successful. We both laughed at after we finished. From there, we played 20 questions. And eventually, talking became more natural. You know, we started asking even more than 20 questions. You know, how we grew up and funny stories about our childhood and our life goals and blah blah blah. Another game that I recommend playing is called the one word game where you make a story between you and your friend or a group of people um, and you just say one word at a time and you go back and forth, back and forth until you make a funny story. Playing these games will make you feel a lot more comfortable with your partner. Number seven, sending gifts. Giving gifts is just another way to show how much you love your partner. What's the harm in showering your partner with gifts every once in a while? Maybe a big hole in your wallet. But it doesn't have to be extravagant unless you want it to be. If you're trying to save up money but you still want to give a gift to your partner, how about a homemade gift? You can write a little love note and you can fold it up into a little beautiful origami figure. Knit a scarf if you know your partner lives in a very cold area. Or make a collage video of yourself wishing your partner a happy birthday. And if you're not feeling creative and you just want to buy something anyway, I recommend couple necklaces. Try to find a necklace that represents your relationship. What I like to do is wear the necklace that's meant for my partner and my partner wears my necklace so that in a way it kind of feels like he's with me. I don't know, that's just me. Or you can get one of those stuffed teddy bears where you can record uh, a voice message in it. So it'll be like, we love you. And it's, ah! I assume you guys are living in different states, uh, countries, or in the same area but just hours apart. So always be mindful of how much it costs to actually send gifts to your partner. Number six, video chat. There are two important things in a long distance relationship. That's seeing your partner's face 
and hearing the voice of your partner. Video chatting makes those things happen at the same time. And I feel that it's very important because it makes it feel that there's no distance. If you're shy, I don't recommend doing it until you're ready. When my partner and I FaceTimed for the first time, we didn't even show our faces. We showed our hands, we showed our feet, we showed our pets, we showed our bedroom. We showed everything but our faces. Don't get the wrong idea. But then we decided to flip our screens at the same time and when our eyes locked, we couldn't stop smiling. My partner got shy and I kept begging to see his face again, but eventually we got used to it and we started FaceTiming a little bit more frequently. You know, you can get creative with video chat. Both of you can sit in front of your computer or phone, whatever you're using, and you guys can have like a little dinner date. You know, have your food in front and you can watch each other eat and talk about your day or whatever. I think it's really cute. It'll create some sense that your partner is actually with you. And I bet if some of you do this, you guys will probably forget that there is distance between you. Number five is make plans to meet up. Being physically together is the ultimate goal in a long distance relationship. If it looks like that's not going to happen at all or if none of you guys are making an effort to see each other, then what's the point? Whether you guys met through a dating website or a video game, or you guys did meet in person first but are now apart because of certain circumstances, it's good to figure out when is the next time you guys will see each other or meet up for the first time because it gives you and your partner something to look forward to. Discuss which one of you guys are going to visit the other person, and where you guys are gonna meet. And if you both work, make sure that your days off coordinate with your partner's days off. Number four, make a timeline scrapbook. I like to keep things that remind me of my boyfriend and the time that we spent together. And I can't bear the thought of throwing away these things because they have so much sentimental value to me. And by things, I mean movie stubs, receipts, uh, screenshot Polaroid pictures, oh my god, so many pictures, the list goes on. But one day, all those things got so accumulated and I got so disorganized, I was like, I need to find a way to organize this so I don't lose it and I need to do something as soon as possible so I don't forget that memory and I need to like record it somehow. I didn't want the memories to fade away to the point that I can't even remember why I have this movie stuff, why I can't why I don't remember I have this receipt, this bear. So I thought one creative way of doing that was to make a timeline scrapbook. It's pretty much creating a history book about your guy's relationship. You can start it off by how you guys met, try to remember the exact date, and if not, you know, just estimate. Write like a little story about that specific day. You can draw stuff or put pictures around that story. If you have any other items to add, go right ahead. Each big event that you spend with your partner, put it on the timeline. I like going back and looking at the scrapbook. It makes me smile every time I see it. And it's also something that your future children can look at if you plan on having kids. Number three, sending each other uh, articles and videos and trying out new shows together. My boyfriend loves to read articles, watch YouTube videos, uh, interviews and reviews, and listens to podcasts all about video games and his favorite TV shows. And sometimes he'll send me a link to watch or listen. As for me, I like watching YouTube videos of kittens, uh, funny nine gag posts, or articles about health. Doing this shows that you're not afraid to show your partner what you're passionate about, uh, what you're interested in, or what kind of humor you're into. It also encourages conversation between you and your partner. Same thing with watching TV shows. If there's a new show airing on TV and you guys are both interested in it, you guys can watch the episode at the same time and then talk about it during the commercials. Number two, writing letters. These are for those couples where the most reliable way to communicate is through letters. And that's probably due to their partner being in the US Army, or Navy, Marines. Internet access and phone calls may be limited to their partner depending on where they're stationed. 
If you find yourself in this situation, try adding some things to your letter like uh, photos of yourself, photos of you and your partner, photos of your house, your pets, you know, anything that you describe in your letter, try to add a photo to go along with it so that your partner has a better uh, understanding, better sense of what you're talking about in your letter. Handwritten letters are the best way to go, but if your handwriting is kind of bad and no one can read it then you can type it up you can also try making open when letters which uh, that was my very first video that i made about a year ago about a year ago and if you want more details you can click down here for the link i made a video yes make sure you read on those official websites depending on where your partner is stationed where they're working or um, make a phone call to inquire more information about what you can and cannot send to your partner. No nude pictures of yourself. They will open up your letters and if they see that, they will confiscate it. And can you just imagine some random person seeing naked photos of you? Uh. Uh, number one is playing video games. This is what brought me and my boyfriend a lot closer. As we played games together, we found out more about our personalities, especially playing uh, competitive and co-op games. So guys and girls, get yourself a PS4, good headset, and make sure you have a good internet connection because PlayStation 4 has a feature called Party Chat. Party Chat is where you guys can chat while playing video games, watching YouTube, Hulu, you guys could be doing different things but you guys can still talk to each other. And you can make it private between you and your partner so that other people on your friends list doesn't join you. Some games that I recommend playing together are GTA, uh, Last of Us, Little Big Planet 3, and uh, Destiny. Of course, there's a lot of other games that you can play, but as long as you and your partner are having fun together, and enjoying each other's company, that's all that matters. And those are my top 10 things to do in a long distance relationship. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like my video. And if you're a new viewer, please subscribe to my channel. I'll try to be making more videos later. So catch you guys later, bye.